Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So we get lots and lots of questions and a few of them get asked all of the time. So we thought it would just be easier to make a proper video of Peter answering those questions that we do get asked the most commonly. So I get asked lots of questions and a lot of the questions are asked nearly on every YouTube and um, whenever we're writing workshops, I get a lot of them are the same repeating questions. So I am just gonna answer the questions I get asked the most and everything I'm saying is just my preference. I'm not telling any of you to do this. This is just why I do what I do. So the very first one I'd say it would be the one I get asked the most is, why do I always shoot in landscape? Why do I never turn the camera up to portrait? Well, there's a few reasons behind that. For a period of my time, I shot with Hasselblad, which was square. Then after that, I was shooting a, a lot of the stuff I was shooting were for magazines and I was mainly working for lifestyle and fishing and things like that. And if I shot a guy holding a fish like this and I shot it in landscape, I knew if the photo wasn't good enough to get a cover, it still might be good enough to get me a two page spread. And that sort of paid me more money than a one page spread. So I could always crop a cover out of my picture, but it gave me the additional benefit of getting a two page spread. And back in those days, the covers was anything from three to $5,000. A double page spread was 500, whereas a single page spread was about 200. So it just allowed me to make more money. And if I'd shot it in portrait, I would have then had the problems of um, how do you crop a portrait into a landscape? It's very hard. The next thing is I also did a bit of VIP work for one of the higher end clubs in Melbourne. And my job was to go there and photograph a VIP who came into their club and get some good shots that they could use as publicity because uh, they had Will I Am or some whatever DJ or whatever band happened to be in Australia at the time and happened to come into their club. They wanted photographs and my lighting setup was with a flash mounted alongside of my lens and I found if I put it to portrait it wasn't giving me the same lighting I wanted so I tended to shoot all of that in landscape as well but shot it wide enough that the client could just do a portrait cut out of that picture. That was the the main reason. So if, if you look at some of my early work, so this is just a, a G-rated selection of my work, you'll see that when I was shooting early in fashion and things like that, I have got landscape squares and all different crops. A lot of the time I do like the crop that my camera gets and I prefer that, but then when I'm working with clients, they might have had a, a banner they needed to do or it might have been for a page of a catalog or something. So all of these pictures were pre-cut for that. A lot of this was commercial work. So you'll see there's all different crops and shapes and sizes depending on how my client or who I was shooting for was after. But if I just keep scrolling, we see this sort of in date order. If I just scroll down a bit, you'll find all of a sudden there's less and less portrait crops. You'll still see some square crops and you'll see two different landscape crops like that one to that one. You'll see the crops different. The difference is one was on a Sony and one was on my Hasselblad medium format. So I ten tended to get into the habit of whatever was in my viewfinder was what I cropped and that's to the size I crop to. I haven't got a preferred crop, but I do prefer to keep the picture most of the time in the crop that I shot it because that's why I shot it like that. So on from there, cropping to me makes a massive difference in a picture. It's something that is one of the reasons why I do very, very little cropping outside a camera because I find when I crop a picture, it changes expressions and I'm more wanting to capture the expression I want, not to crop it later on and change that expression. So if I just grab my crop tool on this picture, all right, so there's our picture and there's a certain type of eye on this picture, like a feel coming out of Beck's eyes on this picture. So if you just watch her face and watch how the expression on her face changes as I bring this crop down. 
So you'll see that all of a sudden her eyes are getting more intense. If I want to get that look, I'll want to do this in camera. I don't want to do it after the fact. So you'll see, you can see the difference. As I come closer to her eyes to the top of the frame, her face gets more intense. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like cropping afterwards, unless I've got a weak face and I want to get some more strength into the eyes, I might do that. Just on cropping, a lot of people comment about cropping, like why do you crop the tops of heads off? Why do you crop off at the ankles? Why do you crop wherever you crop? That's more a camera club thing. In the world of fashion, nobody cares. In fact, the world of art, nobody cares about cropping. It's not a, it's not a thing at all. And quite often, even on hair shoots, we cut the top of the hair off because it's normally got fluff sitting up there and it's not attractive. The whole cropping side of things, especially with the fashion world, the picture I got the most uh, comments about why did I crop her feet off was because no matter what we put on, her feet would have changed the look of the picture. So if she had bare foots with stockings, if she had Ugg boots on, gum boots on, high heels, uh, Crocs, whatever, whatever we did with her feet would have changed the feel in the picture by not having any, being able to see her feet, then we didn't add or take away from what we're trying to show in the picture. Now, going on with this, a lot of people say, why do I tend to put my subjects in the center of my photo? I mentioned this to Beck the other day and she didn't actually realize until she looked into my folio and saw that a lot of my photos, the subjects in the center of the photo. I think it's because my eyes are similar to Stanley Kubrick's and I love the way Stanley Kubrick did the movies and he always drew you to the center of the photo. Um, sometimes I will have room pulled off to the left or the right of a photo because that's a story I want to tell. Like in this picture here, I want you to see that room out there and this sort of leads the way Beck's leaning. It's leading you into that room. But I'm not looking at them like a camera club photographer or a judge or anything. Just my own eyes are saying this to me. I want to have a bit more room on that side. Again, on this picture here, I wanted a little bit more room for it to breathe. So what she was leaning into was going to show a little bit more detail. Predominantly, a lot of the time, I'm quite happy of just dropping the model dead center in the picture or just very slightly off like this. So it's just pulled off a little bit. I don't even think of things like rule of thirds or any of that stuff. I basically, when I'm looking through my viewfinder, I'm making my decisions then. So another question I get asked a lot is why black and white? So if I go back to, you'll see my earlier work there, there's some black and white in there, but there's a fair bit of color sitting in there. And as time's gone by, you'll see that I can do nearly whole pages of no color. And besides, uh, Beck makes me shoot in color. Besides her, if someone's got like crazy red hair or something, um, that might lead me into maybe shooting in color a little bit like the picture of Ra Ra here. I think the red really worked with this environment. That's why I left that picture there in color. If I, I can go through a couple of pictures and show what I mean is even this picture of Beck in here. If you really, if you close your eyes, open your eyes and close your eyes, open your eyes, just say to yourself, what can I see? And yeah, I can see back. But if I go, what can I see? I can see the red and yellow on her shirt. I can see a green, um, red, yellow, blue in this background here. Now, if I look at this picture again, now I've pointed that out to myself. They're really fighting against Beck's eyes. But now if I just go, and I know it's a different picture, but the same background, same shirt, you'll see that all of those colors have stopped you going anywhere but to Beck's eyes. And because I call myself an eye photographer, I find the colors pull you off where I want you to be looking. Whereas you I take the color out of the picture and it puts you back where I want you to be looking. Uh, same with this picture here. Like it's got a sort of a moody renaissance -y color palette. And, but as soon as I pull that color off, look, see how you get drawn straight to Beck. When you're out here, those colors, the greens, the blues, all of those are t giving you a feel and mood of this. We pull that off and your eyes, if they're like my eyes, they just go straight into Beck's face. And that's 
another reason why I like black and white. There's things that can be distracting like this. So this picture is recently shot in Fiji. If I go from black and white, you don't really notice, but you can see green, you can see that sort of reddy color. They're the main colors that stand out. But once I start doing that, can you notice all of a sudden you went to her eyes? Whereas I come back here, you're actually going to her bikini top now because the red is drawing you to there off her face. We go to there, you now get drawn back into her face. The one of the main reasons that I love black and white is they become timeless. By having a black and white shot, you don't know what year or when any of these were taken because they're timeless in the way of they've got no color palette added to them. And that's what I love about the black and white. It, make, it allows me to make the pictures a little bit more timeless and makes you zoom in onto the model who I'm shooting. So a lot of times I also get asked why I use a tripod that's built to lift a car off the ground. So why do I use a great big heavy lump of a thing like this, a big awkward lump? Number one, it's on wheels, so I can just slide it round. Number two, try and tip this thing over. You're not going to, I can have tether cables coming out, clients can trip over them, they're never going to pull this off or pull this over. I can lock it down, there's things I can lock this thing so it will not move at all. I can lock it to the ground. I, the ability to just higher or lower is just so easy compared to a normal tripod. You've got to adjust three or four different things to lower and higher. So I can just get my thing set up. I can move my in and out that easy to get my exact position. And once I'm fully set up and got the crop exactly where I want my crop, it is now locked in there and I can lock everything down so none of this can move. So I've got my crop every single picture and I can just be concentrating on the finished expression, not the height that I'm holding it. And a lot of the time I might be shooting at this level, which is quite uncomfortable for you to do that without a tripod, especially my back. But with this locked in on that height, I can now lean onto the tripod and I can shoot like this and it doesn't hurt my back at all. But if you just tried leaning like this without having that thing to lean against, it wouldn't take long for your back to kill you. So the next reason I like using a tripod is when I'm setting up a shot, I can just put my camera on there. The model will be in the position. I can then set up my focus on there and I can just keep taking pictures without having to recrop, refocus and do that. I can just press the top of the camera and click it, move my lighting around to get my lighting. Everything stays in the exact same place. So it just makes it quicker. I don't even have to look at the camera. I can just reach over, click, or even fire it from my camera. The third thing is when I'm doing uh, intimate portraiture or face shots or even fashion shots that we are really set on, this is the crop, this is what we're gonna look at. I need it there. I, I don't wanna have to readjust my crop every time I get down to the camera. I want to just forget about my crop, forget about everything and just concentrate on looking at the model's eyes or at the model's shape and just, I don't even have to think about my crop and zoom in, zoom out or focus in because it's all been held at focus. I do love once we have got that picture, my favorite thing after that is pull the camera off the tripod and now go freestyle. And it's quite often a time where I would make extra money out of a shoot, especially when the shoots they booked me for five shots for a catalog or five shots for their bill, uh, billboard or window fronts. I would normally say, hey, can just the model and I go freestyle for five, 10 minutes? And we would normally sell at least the same amount of pictures again because of that, because they did have more movement, they have more emotion. And when I'm looking through a viewfinder and following the model and cropping it in there, moving quickly, you really get that feel like you're really in that room. So it lifts that level of the, the feel that you get out of a, uh, a picture. So now everybody can come back and find me a new group of questions to answer. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, don't forget, we do have our subscription site, Inspire, and that's got a lot more of these kind of rants and talks and stuff on there. And the one question we didn't answer that everybody asks is, we are not a couple. <laughs> For the Peter's one millionth time, I am Bex Boss. 
She is uh, my consumer of alcohol. Uh, we are very good friends. We've known each other for a long time, but we are not a couple. Oh. We work together. Well, I'm her. Well, sometimes she's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> if you did enjoy this, I will throw up uh, some other rants and chit chat videos around my head now. Well, that's it.